And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed one of the first surahs to be revealed amongst after Surah Iqra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives uh, revealed Surah Al Duha. Wa Duha wa Layl Ida Saja. Ma wa Daaka Rabbuka wa Ma Qala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the daybreak that He hasn't abandoned you and He's not angry with you. And so it's a preparation to prepare the Prophet for the enormous tests that are about to come. And so the Prophet in the beginning, he wasn't told to tell the people about Islam. He had just received revelation. And so the Prophet he went about and began teaching people secretly. And so you hear about Dar al-Arqam. You hear about Dar al-Arqam. When the Prophet was told to publicly announce Islam, to publicly teach the people and publicly call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine his happiness that this is the moment where all his people become Muslim. That he's going to tell them and they're going to go to Jannah and everybody will be saved. And so he brought them. He called them on the mountain. The mountain, the mountain of Safa. Actually, when people go for Umrah, when you visit the Kaaba, you're standing on the same mountain that the Prophet ﷺ stood on when he made this announcement. And so he called them out. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Oh, Bani Fihr. He's calling them out. Oh, Bani Fihr. Ya Bani Fihr. Bani Fihr, the tribe of Bani Fihr, they came to the mountain. The Prophet ﷺ said, Oh, Banu Adi. The tribe of Adi comes to the mountain. And he started calling them out, tribe by tribe by tribe. They left the marketplaces, everybody left what they do. They said, this is As-Sadiq, this is the truthful one. This is Al-Ameen, the trustworthy one who's calling us. And so they all gathered around. Because this was a place, and the way he was calling them, was how someone who had just seen an attacking army would be calling them. Basically, when there's um, a bomb, and may Allah protect us. But in those countries you may have heard, when there's an airstrike that's about to happen, a certain siren goes off. And even Allah Alam, I remember in Winnipeg where I grew up, there was an IGA. You guys remember IGA? There was an IGA and they said, if you go to IGA, down the street from where our school was, there are bomb sirens on top of the, of the, of the supermarket. Back in the day in the, in the World Wars, that if, you know, um, you know, these people or that people that attacked, the sirens would go off. They were never used. Alhamdulillah, and we never grew up in that kind of, you know, hearing those sounds. But when you hear that sound, this was what the Prophet ﷺ, this was in Mecca, 1400 years ago, this was that sound. And so he told them that if I tell you that there's an army behind this mountain about to attack you, because this is what the siren is about, would you believe me? And they said, yes, we would. You're al Sadiq al Amin. And so he says, Then I'm warning you of a punishment that's coming right between your hands. And so, out of everybody that was standing there, his own uncle, his own family, cursed him out in front of everybody. He said, Tabbalak. He said, may you perish, may you be destroyed. You gathered us for that reason. And Abu Lahab walked away. And all the people turned their backs on the Prophet A moment that he was expecting them to all become Muslim became the moment of the greatest test that any man has gone through. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Lahab. تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد الله سبحانه وتعالى said تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب that the two hands of Abu Lahab have perished and he has perished. مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُ مَا لُهُ وَمَا كَسَبْ All his wealth and everything that he's accumulated in life will avail him nothing. But then began 
the trials against the Prophet ﷺ. They couldn't really physically punish the Prophet ﷺ, so they had to punish him emotionally and punish his followers physically, those of whom they could.